Hey, everybody, this is Perch. It's 2024. What's 2024 going to bring for comics? Well, we have this email. It says, Dear Perch, with 2024 approaching as I type this, what do you foresee happening to the comic book industry in the coming months? You did reply to me that it will see a shrinkage, but where? I, it's, I, you know what? I'm not going to make that joke. Once again. I'm assuming that we'll see a number of shops, publishers shuttering, and Marvel cutting back on titles. From a comic standpoint, I think the Brevoort's X-Men relaunch is going to be a miss. Zeb Wells will leave Amazing Spider-Man after issue 60. DC puts the JSA back on ice as the new Golden Age fuzzes out with a whimper since Johns is leaving for creator-owned work. Oh, and both of Slot's titles get canned. I got to keep my slot to staying going, right? The biggest question I have regarding the future of many of the publishers is, will this be the year where IDW finally closes? There are a lot of other things I could talk about, but I want to finish this before 2024. Happy New York. I think he meant New Year, but that's okay. Um, when did this mail come in? It was December 30. I, do I have a time stamp on this? Uh, damn. I, all, it's December 31st uh, is when this mail came in. I, I could picture this guy like writing it at like, 1156. I got to get this thing out. Hopefully you're not writing Perch, uh, you know, right before the New Year's. Um, what will 2024 bring for comics? Well, I maintain that, uh, yes, I do think a contraction is coming. And I don't think this is the big, uh, you know, the, the most stunning prediction in the world. I think that there's a lot of independent publishers right now, uh, a lot of smaller guys who are running on fumes, who are absolutely, um, you know, in debt. In some cases, a lot of debt. Um, you know, I reached out as part of, uh, well, what's going to happen this year? Uh, I'm going to buy one of these companies and, uh, or, you know, an entity to, to rather than start from complete scratch. What surprised me is how many of them had debt and not a little bit of debt, but millions of dollars worth of debt. That was quite, quite shocking. The other surprise was how many people were extremely interested in selling, um, including some pretty big names. Um, you know, they, they, People are looking to flip. So I do think there's going to be some, I, I just think money runs out. And so I think some of these smaller guys uh, go away. I think you're you're seeing a couple of the creators and people kind of prepping for this by nature of some of the comments that they get around, well, you know, comic books is never about the money. Oh, yes, it was. <laughs> and is. Comic books is about the money. For sure. Um, so I think, but, but you're going to see um, a handful of the independents start to transition into this. Uh, what I like to kind of lovingly call the 1950s, but I get to see my name in print model, uh, which was a you know a joke that they used to make back a long time ago, where uh, book publishers that really didn't have any money kind of sold people on writing, creating content for them with the promise of yeah, you don't get any money, but you do get to see your name in print, and that's exciting. And I think that uh, that you know, we're, I'm starting to see more and more of that. Sometimes wrapped under the guise of uh, hey, it's a contest. Sometimes the, this is your path to get work at Marvel and DC. Sadly, like the big publishers are almost kind of encouraging this by going, yeah, we really want to see some independent work. And so the independent publishers are like, yeah, you, you know, you want a bigger job. We know your dream is not to stay with us. So give us something for free. Anyway, uh, that, that I think collapses by and large because there's just not enough. There's not enough uh, money and time and material to keep that thing going. So I, I think you see that contraction. Um, I, I, I think that, you know, Marvel has at least one more year of just putting out kind of the most, um, and, and, you know, sorry for the creators who are doing this, but, but incredibly uncreative work. We've seen this from Marvel before where we have kind of in a cyclical fashion, we'll see eras where you see people trying to really do some things that are new and different. And look, I, I'm not a big fan of uh, Brian Michael Bendis, but when you saw him come on and, and take the Avengers and really try to do some different things with it and grow it and expand it, um, it was new. And now we're in a, you know, it's like the hunting or farming. You know, if, if the analogy works, hunting is where you're out there exploring, trying to come up with some new things and, and get some new ideas in play. And farming is where you just kind of regurgitate the same stuff over and over again. That's, uh, we're in the farming era now where you see a lot of very uncreative stuff. I mean, the, the funny part is, as much as I thoroughly disliked, you know, Fall of uh, House of X and where they've been going with the X titles, um, another way to look at it is like there's there's nothing really revolutionary exciting happening there. It's just farming. You know, it's easy to make fun of uh, over in D.C. this um, Fire and Ice book where they're in Smallville. But it's, uh, 
there's nothing to this book. It's, it's just, uh, it's like, it just trots out kind of almost jokes on Twitter as comic panels. And there's like, you know, it, it reads as you, do you remember, by the way, if you were collecting comics back in the nineties, you know, Archie was going on back then. Uh, but there wasn't any, there wasn't anything exciting about Archie. I mean, it was just, it was kind of the same jokes. The comics didn't really matter if you read them in whatever order you wanted. And the stories were, were pretty basic. It, it felt like it was written for definitely younger people. Uh, that's, that's what a lot of Marvel and DC stuff reads like today. It's just, you know, there's nothing really to it. It's easy to dunk on it because a lot of the writing is pretty cringy and it, it, you know, it's painful to read. But looking at it from a different perspective, it also just doesn't have any meat to it at all. It's just there. And I think so we're going to see a little bit more of that. I, I think the James Gunn DCU stuff will get a lot of fanfare, but the odds of that being successful are, are astronomically small. Uh, it just, it, it really, you know, doing something really, really different there and kind of catching the imagination. The challenge is... Um, None of what's being pushed or, or hyped or, or has been said feels like um, something that's that's when, when the Marvel Universe came out, when the MCU started doing those movies, we're going to connect them together. There's a sense of newness to it. And now, you know, several years later, it's it's not new. And when you see DC's plans and what they're talking about, similar. But uh, but hey, I, I'd love to be wrong. But I think all of this means that the big two are going to take uh, play very conservative, not take risks, just. Um, I don't mean that politically. I mean, they're just, they're just going to kind of roll out stuff and kind of keep the lights on. Indie publishers are going to shrink. Uh, will this be the year IDW finally, uh, calls it, calls it a day? Um, no, believe it or not. No, I think IDW has at least one or two more years in it. Um, uh, I think, I mean, it's, it's, it's inevitable that it's coming to a conclusion there. But I think that there's still, we still have some more, uh, we still, still have a couple more years of kind of dragging that corpse around. Um, it's a lot of the other smaller companies. And I think the ones, what's going to, so you see, for more of a bold prediction here, I think Diamond is going to fold in 2024. I think that, uh, you know, a comic publisher, whether it's like Boom or one of the bigger ones, or maybe Boom, is going to reveal that it has as deep a financial trouble as IDW or maybe worse. And I think that's going to shock people because they are, you know, that you're, you're used to hearing that, you know, like aftershock and IDW are in trouble. And then when suddenly some of these other guys kind of pop out of the woodwork as being in as big a trouble, it will open eyes up to, you know what, actually comic books. So that's the, the individual companies it's comic books as a whole has real problems in terms of keeping the lights on. And I think that will create some, some panic around summer to fall. Um, I think that's, that's something that we're about to see. So I, I, I look, I, and as for Brevoort, look, I, I would love for that X-Men title to be good. Um, but I think it, it will play it safe. I think it's, it's going to, to come out. I think you're going to get the, the trick is Marvel has been able to, in the past, um, really hype up the idea of, you know, this, you need this comic. This comic is, is, is good. And it's, it's very important for you to have it. They've been able to kind of hype that stuff. And I, I think with diminishing returns year after year, of uh, you know, you got to have this variant cover, got to have this number one relaunch. This is the big thing. And I think Marvel hasn't quite figured out that that isn't working as well as it used to. But you're going to see on full display with, you know, the vampire event that's happening in the uh, summer and then the X-Men relaunch. I mean, Marvel really has in their minds a one-two punch of big relaunch of the X-Men in the, you know, July, the blood hunt event in the summer, and that's just going to carry them for sales. And, uh, you know, Greg Capullo will be doing some kind of comic. So, so that's, uh, that's, that's basically where I think things are going. And uh, Marvel, I think, is going to be surprised by those performing, by, by them underperforming. X-Men, unfortunately, I mean, you know, you can look at Breivore. I mean, he's, he's got likely a mandate to say, hey, within six months, we need 12 titles, you know, that are X-Men related in the market going. So stand them all up quickly. And by the way, you know, we're not going to 
give any kind of longevity to any of these books. So creators are going to be given six month contracts or six issues. And I think all of those, I, I think those two factors means no big risks are going to be taken. There's going to be some kind of big idea that will be tossed out with the X-Men, just like you'll see with Justice League. Um, you know, I, but then everything will be very short term thinking as they just kind of try and crank out, you know, as many books as possible under that banner. That's, and I don't think any of that leads to great success. Oh, you mentioned the uh, Justice Society and some of that stuff for sure. I think a lot of it gets put on the back burner. I do think, you know, if we're talking about something more positive, I think Jeff Johns and what he's doing is going to be successful. I think that he's assembled a decent amount of talent. I think that he understands kind of how to market that talent and do something unique with it. And I think that the Ghost Machine imprint is actually going to do quite well. That's my belief. I think they're going to bring on like one or two names that will surprise you that aren't kind of traditional people who've worked with Johns but are still big names. And I think that's that's going to be big. And I think, you know, it, we'll see. My guess is uh, 2024 will be ending and uh, DC will throw some surprises out and, you know, potentially be bigger heading out of, you know, the end of the year. One year from now, DC will potentially have more momentum than Marvel does. That's uh, that's my feeling. But we'll see. Anyway, what do you think's happening in 2024? Let me know your predictions. We're... we're couple weeks in 2024 now, right? So why not? Anyway, thanks for listening.